Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking with one of my best friends, Ahmed, about how he scored 268 on the USMLB Step 2. So before we get started, don't forget to check out his new channel. Link is in the description below. And let's get straight to it. So tell me, when did you begin preparing for the Step 2 CK? So our medical school is six years. And I started my preparation at the beginning of the fifth day, right after setting for step one. Great, so what was the first resource that you started using? The resource that everyone uses is Seawallet. Seawallet, as you know, is the most powerful resource to study from. So I spent two months in the first pass of Seawallet. Uh, then I've taken another month for the inquiries and market questions and another month for the CMS forms. And the NBMEs, right? CMS and the NBMEs. Yeah, NBMEs were moving with me along the journey. So I've taken one NBME after the first pass of Europe, another NBME after the second pass of Europe, and the other NBMEs in the last month. Great, so which NBMEs did you take? I took NBME 9, NBME 10, NBME 11, and NBME 12, and the three 120 questions. Nice. So, I see from from what you've said, your preparation is just under four months. Is that right? Yeah. So, what do you think was the biggest factor that helped you prepare for step two in less than four months? It's Anki. Mm -hmm. Anki, as you know, depends on the spaced repetition, and not just the spaced repetition. It depends also on strengthening your powerful core. So, I've been using Anki all along the journey. So. My plan was, uh, my daily plan was to do Anki reviews at the beginning of the day, then do my blocks of Yorlet, then I make my own Anki cards depending on these Yorlet questions, and then I study the new cards that I just made. Anki was super helpful for me. So you, you haven't used any pre-made decks, you only used your own cards, is that yeah, right? exactly. Great. You didn't feel like this was time consuming? It was time consuming. But it deserves it. So it was so, worth your time? Yeah. Great. Also, how much do you feel like step one contributed to your score and your timeline for preparing for step two? So, I got 250 in my step one. This was helpful, so I, I prepared well for, for step one. And if someone was well prepared for step one, he will definitely take less time preparing for step two CK. So, step one definitely helps and it helped me. So, when I started taking new wallet blocks, I was getting 65 as a percentage in the very first blocks of your order. Right after you finished the step one. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But this doesn't mean that if you didn't prepare well for step one, you will not be able to prepare for step two CK. You can always start from the scratch. Mm -hmm. So, what other resources did you use? Have you used videos like Words and Beyond or anything else? No, I did not need to use any of these resources. So, only questions and flashcards, right? Yeah. So, as you can see, guys, that's, that's very similar to my prep for step one. It was only flashcards and questions. Basically, the active learning resources for the assembly. Again, it proves that this is also an effective method for um, preparing for step two. And this is not just from personal experience or research. We've seen this among the many students that we've tutored and we've witnessed significant score improvements through just using questions and flashcards and maybe even questions only. That makes a lot of sense to use the most effective way that is proven by research to be the most effective way, which is a spaced repetition. And of course, the questions. So tell me, what do you think of pre-made decks for step two? Well, Anking overall, V12 is very sufficient to prepare for step two. You don't have to make your own new cards unless you enjoy it. Unless you enjoy the process, you love it, you love making your own cards, then you can use the anking overall deck for step one and step two. And there is a nice add-on that you can extract the cards that are related to the U or the block that you have just studied. You can link these questions to their cards in the anking overall deck. We're gonna leave the link to the add-on in the description. Alright, so an important question here. How were you able to fit in two blocks of UWorld while also making your own flashcards during med school? And I think you said you finished um, the first class of UWorld in less than two months, right? 
So how did you do all of this during year five? Because by the way, guys, um, Ahmed and I are actually in the same class and year five was one of the tough years. We had to attend almost every day. So how were you able to do all of this during that period of time? So basically you all and any other cushion bag should be used in a timed mode. If you leave yourself to the tutor mode, you will take forever to finish 40 questions. But taking 40 questions in an hour and taking another set of 40 questions in another hour, that's two hours. You are done with the questions, you just need to review them. And it's about the secrets, how to review the block. So it took me two hours to review a block. And I wasn't just, uh, as you can see from the score, of course, I wasn't just uh, escaping the items, no. I was really focusing on getting every single new idea or new concept written in the URL explanations and get these into new Anki flashcards. So the URL process itself took me every day six hours. And Anki making new Anki cards took me, and I'm studying them, took me every day like two hours. And the reviews is the thing that took me by average, it depends on the number of the reviews per day, but by average, other two hours. You know, this is a lot of studying, yeah. but uh, if you want to do it, you need to pay what it costs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at the end of the day, you took it in less than four months, just after step one, during med school, during one of the toughest years of med school. So this is really impressive. So you said that you focused on the U world explanations. Did you feel like this really helped you on the real exam? Yeah, of course. If you get a question wrong, you need to know why you got this question wrong. And it really depends, it's an individual thing, but you need to categorize your mistakes. Why on the earth I got this question wrong? And you need to have an explanation for every single question. You really need to know. Was this a knowledge gap? I didn't know the concept. Or was this a conceptual error? I didn't, I knew the concept, but I didn't understand it fully in the first place. Or was it a careless error? I just overskipped the important thing is written in the question stem. Or was it another thing, another reason related to how you approach the question and how you try to understand the question? So you need to know a reason for every single question, for every single wrong question. And that's what I did. And whenever I get a wrong question, I need to know why this question was wrong. And this really helped me a lot. So basically, I try to, to take the first and second best, not just inquiries and market questions. I try to take a full second best. When I started, I was getting like 100% uh, of the blocks. So I thought this is not really helpful. Uh, and that was because I really understood in every single mistake, in every single incorrect choice I made, why this was wrong. Okay. So yeah, it did help me a lot. So, so yeah, guys, I, I agree 100% here. I think this is a really crucial point. Knowing exactly why you made the mistake on the question. Is it an issue with application of knowledge or critical thinking? Is it because you forgot a little factoid? Maybe you weren't concentrating? Definitely try and figure out the reason why you made a mistake because this will help keep you efficient when you're going through the explanations because they might be quite long and they actually took you um, you said two hours to review one block, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's important to be efficient when you're going through those explanations. So you only mentioned U World as your only question bank. Why haven't you used other key banks? So it always depends on where you are in your stage of preparation, where you are. So after the first pass of your life, my MBA, my first MBA score was satisfying for me. So I didn't have to, but if you have to, you need to do that. And by the way, um, AMBUS was a good thing for me. So when I took the MBMEs and CMS forms, I reviewed the MBMEs and the CMS forms basically from Anki. So for example, I had a question wrong about atrial fibrillation. I need to go to AMBUS and read their article about atrial fibrillation and take notes from that article and do the question session, the question session on atrial fibrillation from AMBUS. Okay, so this was a random thing depending on what are my weak points, but it was very helpful. It was really helpful to use Ambos as a review source for the things that I'm weak on. And that's another point, by the way, it doesn't make any sense to study everything the same. You need to focus on your weak points. 
Yeah, and I like how you tackled your weaknesses here. This is something I do with students very often. Whenever I notice that they have weaknesses in a certain topic, instead of making them go through a passive learning resource like watching a video, I would make them solve questions on this topic from another question bank or maybe even go through the Ambos library. So I think that's a very effective way of going through your weaknesses. Yeah, exactly. All right, I think that's all. Thank you so much for your time and advice, Ahmed. Thank you, Yusuf. It was very nice to meet you. I'm basically meeting you every day, <laughs> but it was very nice to be in your channel. And thank you, everyone. Oh, and make sure to check out Ahmed's channel if you haven't yet. Link is in the description below. Thank you for watching.